This is the Anarchist War Journal entry number 15, and I'm going to introduce to you Professor Tom Woods. I had the pleasure of interviewing him at the Mises Institute during Mises University Week. And I really like this guy's uh, great, unbiased, factual viewpoint of history. History for me has uh, been my favorite subject in going through these indoctrination camps and further propelled through the civilizations that Meyer gained, starting with uh, number two, if you guys remember that one. And I actually, I think this was a gift by my buddy Panzer to the library here. And the funny thing about this one, uh, The Politically Incorrect Guide to American History, written by Mr. Professor Tom Woods, is that I saw it at the Visitor Center at Colonial Williamsburg. And so it's, it's out there. It's, it's uh, a lot of this kind of truth, you know, if you, you can kind of keep your eyes open, right? Um, in the middle of a lot of these other kind of lies and mythologies that kind of people put out there and push this history. And so that's that was kind of refreshing to see. And it was mostly uh, refreshing, finally, to meet uh, the man himself in terms of providing very good analysis of history and, and its application to free market anarchism and, most importantly, to Austrian economics. So I won't delay any further than that. Uh, please enjoy the interview and stay liberated. Why is Austrian economics uh, important to you? Well, I think because it helps to understand how the world actually works. And because it's, it's an area in which I think if you encounter it and read it and investigate it with an open mind, you find, it, you find yourself virtually compelled to accept it because it's so convincing and elegant, uh, even beautiful in the, in the way it one thing builds upon the next, builds upon the next, until you have this beautiful edifice of thought that corresponds to reality. Reality be makes more sense with these tools. And uh, most people, when they read economics, or if they read so-called mainstream economics, they don't understand what it is, or it seems to be too abstract, not connected to reality, too based on modeling. Whereas ours is relentlessly realistic. And uh, that's why people respond to it. Nice. And in this particular era, I guess, uh, using Oster, Astrid in uh, economics, you found it helpful, I guess, in applying uh, to your study of history as well? Yeah, I actually wrote an article uh, for the Mises Institute's journal, Quarterly Journal of Austrian Economics, called What Austrian Economics Can Teach Historians. And there are, of course, an awful lot of things that can teach historians. The, the Austrian understanding of what causes the business cycle, for example, can help historians make sense of certain episodes in economic history. Um, but also a correct Austrian understanding of, you know, uh, national income accounting can help make sense of whether war really makes us prosperous or actually retards economic progress. You can make sense of what the economic performance numbers during a war are really saying. Not just look at them superficially, but look at them beneath the surface. So there are a lot of truths in history that are obscured without the the key that Austrian economics uh, provides you to unlock them. Nice. And what do you think then of government and should it be abolished? <laughs> well, I'll say this. The state, the coercive apparatus that we are all familiar with, is, uh, is foreign to the analysis that we read in the Austrian treatises by and large. Not altogether, but by and large. Um, because they, you know, if you look at strict Austrian analysis, it's about uh, exchange and it's about uh, voluntary exchange. It's about production and interest rates and prices and uh, profit, and all these things occur just spontaneously on the market. And and there's no analytical reason to suppose that every service, every good, couldn't just be subject to the same analysis. There's no reason to take some out and say, well, these, we have to apply a different kind of analysis to them. Um, in terms of abolishing government, well, I mean, that word, I think that people just misunderstand. Um, I just think there should be a voluntary society. And there, there is such a thing as student government. I mean, that could be legitimate. In, in high school, you have a student government, or, you know, there's the government of the chess club. You have right. a chess yeah. club president. <laughs> as long as it's voluntary, you right. can call it what you want. Yeah. And um, then from there, what does uh, free market anarchy or anarcho-capitalism mean to you? Hmm. Well, it means, um, oh, I want to say this in a way that doesn't 
insult people who, who don't agree with me. Because I, I have a lot of people I like and admire who, right. dis, who do disagree with me on this, and I don't think they're all just stubborn dolts who refuse to listen to reason. I, I, I won't say it. Some of them are, <laughs> but most of them are. But I would say it, it is just the consistent application of the same economic and moral principles you apply to all other aspects of your life. We apply the insights of Austrian economics across the board in all industries and in all times and places. And, and so what we're saying with uh, so-called anarcho-capitalism is that if you're going to do that, if you're going to apply these economic laws across the board, you're going to recognize that they apply across the board, then go ahead and apply them across the board already. Right. And likewise, if you're going to, especially if you're a conservative who talks all day long about we have to have absolute moral principles, Okay, but again, that's what this is. It's saying that when we say you can't take others' things, we really mean it. Right. We don't just mean it like 80% of the time or 98% of the time. We're going to apply that across the board and see, you know, see where it leads us. Right, consistently, principally. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then uh, from there, um, I guess in, in your area of uh, expertise and thoughts on what do you think of uh, secessionism then? All the way down to, I guess, individual secessionism. Yeah, in I, I will admit that I have a little... I'm a little bit more uh, ambivalent about it than I used to be. Mm -hmm. In general, I favor all secessionist movements mm -hmm. because I want, you know, the more decentralization there is, the more possi the greater the possibility that one or more lo locales will be attractive from a libertarian point of view. But the larger political units get, the less cons fewer constraints there are on them because the ability for people to exit that political unit is constrained. If I have to fly, you know, or move a thousand miles away to escape a particular jurisdiction. Some people just can't afford to do that. Right. But if I have to move only a thousand feet, that puts a check on them. Uh, so I generally favor that. But on the other hand, I have to admit, there are cases where if I know that the seceding people are seceding because once they secede, their intention is to uh, do great physical harm to a particular minority within right. their borders... It's hard for me to just say, oh, this is morally very clear. Of course, we always favor secession. Uh, I'm, I'm still working that one out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, inherently, though, a lot of people think, well, there's going to be a lot of violence. But I guess we look like the eastern part of uh, Europe when the USSR collapsed. It wasn't really violent at all. Yeah, um, Norway seceded from Sweden. I mean, there are plenty of cases of, of, of peaceful secession. There's no reason for secession to have to be violent. No particular reason. It's just a decision that we want... a a borderline drawn in a different place from right. where it is now. There's no reason for violence with that. Beautiful. And and here in uh, Rothbard's library, uh, do you consider yourself uh, an enemy of the state? Yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being a champion of liberty, sir. It's been a pleasure uh, being in your lectures and uh, being part of uh, the Mises Institute this summer. This has been a wonderful week. Thank yeah. you. <laughs>